That was when the momentum shifted to the grassroots. And I'm here with you, shoulder to shoulder, do we clean this mess up? Hundreds of groups sprang up to fight pollution and poison in their own backyard. Many were inspired by Love Canal. All were battling to save their homes, their lives, their children. We have workers in Geismar right now that's got chemicals in their blood. If they were fish, you would not be allowed to catch them and eat them. 100% of all of Houston's city-owned landfills were located in predominantly black neighborhoods. 100%, without deviation, six out of eight of the city-owned uh, incinerators were located in predominantly black neighborhoods. African Americans primarily, but also Hispanics and, minor and other minorities and recent immigrants realized that they were bearing the brunt of environmental pollution in America because of their lack of political clout, and they decided they had to get, do something about it. West Virginia? A lot of people don't even know there are black people in West Virginia. And this company, Union Carbide, found them. The only place in the country that manufactured methyl isocyanate, MIC, that same chemical that killed all those people in Bhopal, India, was in Institute West Virginia. And Institute was 95% black and has always been 95% black. The largest hazardous waste landfill in the country is located in Sumter County in Emel, Alabama, 95% black. At the time that landfill was located, was cited, you got a county that's 75% black, but there are no black people on the county commission. You say, how can that be? It's called apartheid, American style. We will not allow one county to become a dump site. It was not until Warren County, where that toxic waste landfill was placed in the middle of this predominantly black county, that began to galvanize people to talk about this whole idea of environmental racism. The protesters were told not to block the trucks. They are now lying in the streets now, blocking one truck, moving into the landfill. They are refusing in order to move, and they are being arrested one by one. I would like to live in peace, and I'll go to jail in peace. This black community being dumped on, being targeted, and people saying no, we have a right to live in a clean and healthy environment. That's when the whole idea of environmental justice as a national movement uh, came into effect. Why did they say, wait a minute, we can't allow them people to stay there, but they, they, they took the white out and allowed us to stay here. I'm the one that's got to breathe that stuff at night. I'm the one that's going to be laying around you going, uh, 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 I wonder can I get my breath? across the street, and I don't even hear a damn signal. By the time my family got up, the gas was all in our house. Unfortunately, the mainstream environmental movement uh, for too long did not realize how important this was and did not cooperate and partner with, with the environmental justice movement. It was a point in time when the environmental groups didn't get it and the civil rights groups didn't get it, and it took uh, two decades for those two movements, civil rights movement and environmental movement, to converge. Then we said, okay, environmental justice for all. It's about race and class. And if a community that is poor and it is powerless, if they're getting dumped on, then that is an environmental justice issue because it's about power or lack thereof. This is about human rights the right to breathe clean air, drink clean water, eat food that's safe, and to live in a community that is nourishing and sustaining. These are basic human rights, and that's what we're fighting for. <laughs>